All right, if everybody's ready, we will call the meeting to order. Has everybody had a chance to look at the minutes from last month? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. I have anybody that will approve? So moved. Second. All right. Let's go on to Education Committee report. I think we have some people that went to the conference, the Minnesota conference, that would like to make some notes. The symposium? Yes. Yeah. Sure. Um, we had an opportunity, three of us had an opportunity to go up to the Minnesota Department of Human Rights Symposium. Uh, a number of us had different workshops we, we were able to take, uh, take in. Uh, the ones that I attended, uh, aside from the overview of what the Minnesota Department of Human Rights was doing in Governor Mark Dayton's speech at the beginning, which was the plenary session, um, I think Tim and I took in voting, uh, some issues emergent in voting rights, uh, even in Minnesota. <coughs> we heard some stories that were kind of scary about people being challenged at the outside the voting booth. Uh, second, uh, the one that I went to was on school bullying. I think we were all in that yep, one. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and we have some ideas maybe later on we'd like to consider with that. Uh, I did a follow-up one on uh, Title IX in the colleges, um, since it fits mm -hmm. my setting as well. But it was a direct relation to school bullying incidents and dealing Can with Can you explain Title IX? Um, Title IX really deals with harassment. And uh, the big thing with Title IX is the uh, gender uh, equality mm -hmm. with uh, sports, both high school and college, but it also covers under sexual harassment and uh, putting yourself in a hostile work environment, uh, things like that is all part of Title IX. Uh, and the last one I uh, attended was a uh, Edina City Human Rights Commissioner and how they changed their city's Human Rights Commission to be a lot more active and a lot more progressive and a lot more into the community. Uh, she was the one who suggested what I left you with, which, which is a the human rights, Universal Human Rights Declaration, which was produced by the United Nations in 1948, um, which I think there's only six countries which have not adopted it, the U.S. being one of them. Um, Are you... It's not a what? Is that serious? It's serious. Yeah, the United States has never adopted this. Wow. Even oh, what? though Eleanor Roosevelt was on the... Eleanor Roosevelt human was rights. on the Universal. committee that wrote the... the um, the United Articles. States has not. Adopted. I assume North Korea was another. North Korea, China. Russia. Yeah, I don't remember all six offhand, mm -hmm. but yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds right. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I, I thought it was a useful conference. It gave us some ideas of how we could yes, be a little more active and take a more progressive role in the community. And I'll yield to <coughs> Tim. Yeah, I mean, I thought it was a great conference, a, a very uh, diverse group. The One of the. Uh, breakout sessions I attended was 21st century policing. Um, they had a couple chiefs of police, one retired from St. Paul, the other one was from St. Cloud. Yes. And they had a couple of um, two community activists from mm -hmm. the city of St. Paul. And they, they kind of focused on St. Paul and some of the things that they're doing um, as far as having communication between the police departments and the community. Um, and some of the things when there are flare-ups or when there's incidents that happen, how quickly that these um, guys can get together and talk about it and get the communication out there and, um, you know, deal with it, some of these issues that they have. So, uh, And then the last breakout session I went to was Islamophobia in the state of Minnesota. And uh, the woman that was speaking at that one um, kind of just talked about some of the, the hate groups in the state of Minnesota and who they are, what their what their agendas are, and some of the struggles that law enforcement has with them as well. So it was it was a great conference, and um, you know I plan to go next year, mm -hmm. and you know I recommend it for for any of us to go again next year. I thought it was a great a great symposium. Yeah. Alma, what was the other breakout sessions you attended? I went to the Need to Affect Change. Is that uh, uh, in criminal justice? And basically, they address the disparity between arrests and uh, profiling, and um, they want to get an incremental reform and uh, they, and get more data, data to see what really is happening and training uh, for the uh, for the police to um, uh, deal with these things, um, and then rerouting it from an antiquated mental and system. I don't know if it was them 
who 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 mentioned that? Or it was the police, uh, the chief from uh, Saint Cloud, that they said that, that uh, the current climate in which they w they really want law and order can actually benefit because they might give us more money. They can give the communities more money that they can use to come up with some more effective ways of policing. So I, I got those confused, but it's kind of the same thing, yeah. Um, what else? Uh, the one about the outreach, the civic engagement. I think that we're, in this commission, we're right on the track, and right on track. A lot of the things that we've been doing, that's what they, they talked about, um, education. Uh, uh, the other one that we went was the bullying, and with the bullying, we had so many. We have so many resources available. Some of the 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 guy that spoke, uh, we can uh, Craig Worthington, mm -hmm. the director of safety and technical assistance center. I think he gave us his car. I I don't know what he did with those cars, but um, they, uh, he, I'm pretty sure that we can have him come and. Uh, uh, present something or it was a talk, but also, you know, it'd be nice to coordinate with the District 88 because they that's what they do too. They right. talk to the districts. <coughs> and the final one that I went to was um, um, policing model. No, I don't even know which one I went. The, the last one was law enforcement and responsibilities to individuals with disabilities. And that was very cool because this guy, Robert Sink, they have this new program called CARE in which they actually voluntarily, they have these people with uh, problems, and it's mostly autism with, that he works with because he has two autistic kids, that they give them a chip, and when they call the police, the police can, uh, can read the chip, and um, it says things like what kind of uh, things triggered uh, the behaviors, what are the things that the, the, uh, this escal the escalates, the incidents, and you know, it can be used for anything. I talked a little bit to him, and that would be really cool if we can get him to talk a little bit more and uh, to approach Dave. I mean, he knows about this. He probably already knows. But, you know, when he talks about response time, well, you know, you might still have to call somebody, but it's instant response. This is what this guy has. And I asked him, well, how about all the things? Like schizophrenia, schizophrenia, paranoia, addictions that, 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 that will work. The problem with that, and I, I see why a lot of people are concerned, is the question of privacy. He emphasized that um, they, all, the, the people only get numbers. The only ones who can decode those numbers are the police. But, you know, there were a lot of people who were raising questions about, well, can they be accessed by somebody else? I mean, that information is somewhere. And uh, that's always tricky when you have something like that. Of course, the chief right now is voluntarily, voluntary, and I don't think that we can ever change that. But um, that was said. Well, it was a good, good. The 21st century policing mm -hmm. um, seminar that I went to, they talked about the body cameras as well. Oh. Um, mm -hmm. I know there's several communities in the Twin mm -hmm. Cities that are, are leaning towards having the body cameras, and some have already implemented mm -hmm. tests. Um, subjects to be w using the body camera so you know there's a whole a whole gambit of um, positives and challenges that come with having body cameras on on calls and yeah. you know, reviewing they talked about you know reviewing the video and you know who has access to that does the public have access to it does does law enforcement keep that for evidence purposes and so there's definitely challenges that we talked about in that um, the 21st century policing so I definitely want to go again next year because it seems like every year they have different breakout sessions. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's it was very interesting. <coughs> Were there a number of police there then? Yeah, I mean it was for them as well. I mean that wasn't okay. Yeah, they had kind of had a, a different. Um, no, no, nobody from New Alm, oh. St. Paul, and. Um, St. Cloud, but there were people that were from law enforcement that were attending the mm -hmm. symposium mm -hmm. as well because they had a, a, you know, a wide range of, of different breakout sessions, whether it's social workers or yeah. law enforcement mm -hmm. or um, human rights uh, commissioners like ourselves. So it was cool. very interesting. If it's okay with everybody, I would like to skip over the events committee and go straight mm -hmm. to the uh, the New Ulm Police Department just because it flows very well with the education committee and then we can go back sure all right sure excellent Tim, would you like to start? sure uh jackie and i attended this last 
Thursday, I believe it was, a uh, little, little over an hour meeting, uh, Commander Dave Borkert called that, and uh, this is uh, what he talked about last at our last meeting, uh, essentially a critical incident uh, team training options. This is really the beginning of it all, just opening some dialogue with other professionals. We had uh, Chief Deputy Seidel was there from... Uh, Brown County Sheriff's Department. Les Schultz was there from Brown County Probation. Uh, the and I d didn't catch her name, uh, but she was in charge of uh, the mental health in Brown County for Family Services. And there also was another individual there from uh, Alina Health who was in the Chemical Dependency Unit, I believe. Uh, just discussing scenarios. Also there, I should say, was the South Central Mobile Crisis uh, team leader, uh, Darren Tungsik, I hope I have his name right, uh, describing what the South Central Crisis Team is all about. They do have beds over in Mankato, and essentially now they have the mobile team that are going to uh, various communities, uh, and that's what Dave was talking about when he was here last time. And what this involves is getting a fairly quick response into calls that police officers get. Uh, when it comes to training for, uh, I'm not going to say diagnose, diagnosed, but getting a handle on a mental health issue that somebody may have, uh, a lot of the calls that they do get, and those calls continue to go up, uh, it's usually a chemical dependency issue, uh, suicide issue, things like that. These usually go hand in hand with mental health issues. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the unfortunate thing is, uh, that is a trend that seems to be growing uh, for the officers going to a lot of mental health calls. Getting back to what I was going to say, officers, the only training they get is one shot at this point. Mm -hmm. At the beginning. At the beginning. Mm -hmm. Before they, they get their badge. Before yeah. they get their badge. Uh, there's nothing <clears throat> ongoing in training these officers. That's one thing that Commander Bork had said he would like to change. He would like to have and implement a continual training to keep people up to date uh, on, on how to how to read things, so to speak. Uh, because the sad part is, if they don't get any help, they either go to the. There's three options for most of these people: the emergency room, detox, mm -hmm. oh, and yeah. a seventy-two hour hold at the jail. Mm -hmm. And the thing that both Jackie and I would really surprised us is that. Uh, some of these people are on meds. If they're 72 hours in the jail they don't and they don't get their medication. No. Mm -hmm. uh, they lose any of their uh, county assistance. Correct. They lose their Medicaid or their Minnesota care. It's just gone. So then that price comes on to the county mm -hmm. to then take care of any of their medical issue or prescription drugs. Right. It, 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 in my mind, in, in listening to the discussion, because that's mostly what I did was listen to things, uh, we've got a critical bed shortage for mentally ill people, yeah. critical staff shortage as well. And so many of these things really boil down to funding from the state to the various counties and the cities to uh, alleviate this problem. And it's uh, one of those things that uh, I think as a Human Rights Commission, we do have to lobby our legislators how important these things are. Uh, for people who do have mental health issues. And for the safety of the community. Yeah, and the safety and of the community as well. Safety. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and we really need pediatrics. Oh my gosh, we need pediatric mm -hmm. support. We yep. have. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we do, there, there's a lot of issues out there that uh, fly under the radar, if you will, mm -hmm. for a lot of us. And, uh, you know, it, it was an eye opening experience listening to uh, both Darren from. The South Central Mobile Crisis Team, Commander Borkert, and uh, Chief Deputy Seidel, because they're the ones who are in that all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, they do work in concert with the mental health professionals at Family Services, uh, but you know it's not that rapid response, mm -hmm. and uh, that's where this can come from. The South Central Mobile Crisis Team can come over here and find a spot where these people can be safe, so to speak. Um, so it, it, it was interesting. There are still 
I think a lot of things to work out with this. Like I said, this was the first meeting, really a preliminary, just kind of outlining what the needs are and uh, and what can be done to uh, alleviate the problems. Jackie, <coughs> your thoughts on all this when you were there? I would love to say it's kudos to Commander Borkert for yeah. being proactive, making sure that our community is positively represented when it comes to police and community interaction. Um, it is definitely important that we we get a lot of help for people in mental health crisis or chemical dependency crisis. Um, going to back to the 21st century policing uh, that you spoke mm -hmm. about, Tim, mm -hmm. uh, and then care with the autism or with other mental health. Um, Commander Borkert thought maybe it would be a good idea to have the Human Rights Commission be like a citizen review panel for interaction, police interaction. Um, part of what he, he relayed to me was that he could share the incident um, reports with us and you know, we could get more detail mm -hmm. if we needed them. Mm -hmm. And then at some point, if there are more details that we need, we would just contact him and then he can report to us. And then if it's a larger deal where it mm -hmm. includes public scrutiny um, or any other interest that way, we could do these types of uh, interactions at our board meeting on you know, where it's being broadcast. So th they really want to show transparency and you know, they want to make sure that it's community policing and we have a great interaction because I mean, what better way to work with community community policing than to work hand in hand with the Human Rights Commission? We definitely need to be friends, and we need to work together all the time because we can be our commission and the police force. Us working together is always going to be a positive experience. <clears throat> like he talked about, it definitely would be a transparent thing as well. Is this something that? the Human Rights Commission in New Ulm has done before? They ha they, in the past, they had the power to mediate. And I don't know at what point there was, oh no, no, we just called the, you know, simple. <coughs> so that's something that has to be researched and, and see what power we can have. Uh, if, if the police uh, department asks us to uh, mediate or review things, I don't see why there would be a problem. And obviously uh, it would be something we'd have to put past the mayor and uh, city council possibly, uh, I don't even uh, know. Yeah, uh, the city uh, manager, right. probably. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I think we I have all shown that we, we know what we're talking about, that we are being educated and that we're all capable to advise, which is what we're supposed to be doing. The, our, our job is to advise the city about some of these things. So um, I think that fits in really well. And just uh, along what you were saying, that we have to, to get along with the community and, and be transparent and, and engage. You know, the panel that was for the implemented the 21st century was uh, the chief of St. Cloud uh, Police Department, the president of the Community Ambassador Initiative, and the president of the African American Leadership Council. So they were community leaders who were close, you know, working very closely mm -hmm. with, uh, with the police department. And that was, and, and they've done very well because after that incident, there was no, no major repercussions of after the mall incident. And yeah, you don't hear about any, um, you know, bad press or whatever in the city of St. Paul. They really are, are very good at Paul, yeah. being communicated with each other. So, Larry, I was impressed. I'm not opposed to being involved in this, but are, is there a police commission which supervises that in the city? I don't. I wouldn't want to supersede their responsibility. Do we have a com police commission? I'm not sure. I can, I can speak with Commander Borkert. Yeah. I, I guess I was under the assumption that he, you know, that right. was something yeah. that he had free will over. Um, but I'll make sure when I, you know, I get a chance after the meeting to touch base with him to see. My, my recommendation would be to ask the city council to review what our role is as it relates to the city charter and the bylaws mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. to see how, what our role is supposed to be in this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't believe we have a... Whether that needs 
I don't believe Duwam has a police commission per se. I okay. believe it's the city council, and the mayor does the appointing of uh, uh, the hierarchy, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. And I think at this point we're not talking about making any decisions oh, or gotcha. making recommendations. No. We're talking just about advising, which I know it's under mm -hmm. the, it's a preview consulting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're like kind consulting, consulting yeah. and, and educators is like as what I've always understood our role to be. Yeah, yeah, making sure that no human rights are violated right. in this process. I think that's that's and what that's our job. That's what our job in is. The, right. In the yeah. charter, in what we're supposed to do. But yeah, I agree that we have to really make sure that we are, you know, not overstepping in line anything. With, right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. yes. Ron, are you mediating? Might be a different volunteering yeah. to yeah. to check in on that mm -hmm. for us. Thank you. Ron is. And uh, just I would like to add something else from the symposium. Um, I think pretty much there was a sense, and I, you know, starting with Dayton, that, yeah, they were not happy with some of the, you know, things that have been happening with uh, human rights. And he made a, he, he really stressed the fact that this Minnesota and his city and this state was, uh, you know, diverse and we, he was going to fight to, you know, for everybody's human rights and stuff like that. So uh, that was kind of cool. And then I forgot why I brought that up. So, oh, oh, then um, remember I, I talked about maybe having a resolution from the uh, Human uh, Rights Commission, the New Human Rights Commission, the, uh, decrying and, you know, saying, just opposing some of the stuff that is going on. Um, I haven't had a chance to do much research, much research because I've been really busy. However, I did talk to the head of the new office of the uh, human rights in in Duluth. I think the Minnesota Department of uh, Human the Rights. City Commission. He's the city op, uh, human rights officer. Sir. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. lost his card. Right, yeah. Somewhere. Yeah. And uh, he did indicate that Duluth was uh, working. On a resolution, but they were still working on it. And I've seen, I've been seeing that a lot of cities have proposed this, but they're still working on it. Mm -hmm. I think they are, you know, figuring out what exactly they're going to say and how they're going to to influence this. They, what what they want to happen. So I will continue researching it. And and he said that as soon as he heard something from the city of Duluth, he will let me know what they had. They had. Uh, past or what they were. I know they have some excellent p programs on um, the GTLB pro um, groups up in um, Duluth. They've got some very active groups up there as well. So yeah. they've got some good things going up there. Mm -hmm. Different, They've mm -hmm. diversed into the different various groups. And yeah. um, I've got that kind of uh, a layout of that. If you need that, I can maybe get that to you. Oh, that would be great. Yeah, for some of those activities anyway. Did any of you get a chance? I know we had spoke last month about uh, junior commissioners that you were going to uh, touch base with other human rights commissions to see if that was something that they do or get ideas from I them. Was I, did I say that? I promise I will, I will call the human <laughs> the league. Um, I forgot it. What what's uh, Beth Varos? Uh, is she still involved with our commission or not at all? Is she supposed to still report something to us or not? But I will. Is that the League of League, Human Rights? The Human, League of Human, Human Rights, Rights Commissions. Commissions. Yeah. Well, yeah. Alicia, didn't she not uh, do it uh, for the second year? She was. I don't know. I, I forgot what happened. She resigned that post and Jackie was going to take her place? That's right. There yeah. were, there's, uh -huh. it was unable to happen on my end the, to be okay. able to do the commitment for, okay. for that. That's right. So okay. they are still looking for a liaison. Oh, if there's okay. anybody that would like to um, mm. volunteer on that, or if we all want to take mm -hmm. turns, however that would be, maybe that's something to put on the agenda for next that month. That would be very nice possible. if whoever is, has a chance to go is going to be mm -hmm. in the cities anyway, if they could attend it. But I, I will be happy to approach them and ask them what if they have something like that, uh, and uh, how do they figure it out. Um, didn't we announce uh, on our meeting last time uh, um, that any young person that was interested in human rights to attend the meeting and introduce themselves? Or maybe I've imagined that. I was going to speak with Betty Euling after we had a chance to meet as the commission and go over what 
Tim and I experienced at the meeting with ah, Commander okay. Borgby. Well, our last meeting, Ron had mentioned that uh, he was approached by somebody who wanted to yes. be. Uh, and I extended the, the invitation, but ah. obviously she not here yet. So There's a lot of backs of chairs I see. I, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. Jack, I had a chance to talk to some people up at the symposium. There were quite a few young people there. I suspect mm -hmm. college age, though, more than anything um, at the symposium. What I talked to some others, what they confessed with their commissions is they have a hard enough time balancing their commissions with a diversity of people. For example, the Edina Commission, Human Rights Commission, she showed a picture, they were all women, and mm -hmm. all white women <laughs> in Edina. And that, um, she confessed that's a challenge that a lot of commissions have is, is just getting adult diversity down mm -hmm. as well. But I mean, I don't, it's, I don't think there's any reason not to be involved as a young person, but I think that's the, they're facing more challenges. Mm -hmm. But I, I really, really think that we put a, a, the word out to the high school. Yeah. I'm certain that there will be people interested. I'll touch base with yeah. Betty this week. Yeah. Okay. Anything else, uh, Tim, on the meeting at all? Uh, no. Uh, they're planning another one, I think, in the future. But uh, when that is, I don't know. Commander Borkert, I assume, will be letting me know. Or You're right. Know. I'm sure he'll be contacting you on that. Is there any chance that there, there would be it, it, that we would be able to tape that and put it on TV, or is that not appropriate? Or not? I don't think that's really appropriate okay. at this point in time, Oma. Um, things are still th things are still together. yeah. I mean, it's this was yeah. the f this was the first step in Fine. opening a dialogue mm -hmm. of uh, of getting this together, and I think they still have to probably look at grants and things like that to fund it. As yeah. well, so yeah, actually, you probably have to see the also president in other cities if they have something like that. If they mm -hmm. how public is it, it is, yeah, that reminds me of about the meeting. Uh, Commander Borger <coughs> also mentioned, you know, asked if he thought it w or if we thought it would be beneficial to have regular law enforcement attend our meetings to fill us in, and that might be a good mm -hmm. way for them to come out and tell us how things are right. are going You're right where we would then not have to you know go through to have it on tape yeah, or recorded provide them a forum for yeah an update or mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. uh, can we go to the events committee I think that's you Lori so, I mean, am I it? <laughs> You're okay. it. I mean, that's well I tell you um, I did as much as get the list of what has to be done and I think okay. I looked in our budget we've got what four hundred dollars mm -hmm. and this is what I'm thinking um, you know it's about 20 25 people that got this award um, many in wheelchairs many you know and we need to have a, a handy very handicapped accessible building um, I haven't contacted any and then you and I were going to connect up but I just haven't done that yet so I saw you kind of talked about uh, maybe something in January. Well, originally this award right. was given in uh, Martin Luther October. King uh, uh, Day. Okay. And it got it started getting moved it's farther and farther and farther until we ended up in October, I think. Okay. And there is no reason, especially since we have so much going on now, uh, to maybe just delay. And instead of being the 2015, it can be the 2016, you know, Human Rights Award, and start doing the mm -hmm. the. Um, the awarding mm -hmm. on in February, right? It's February 17 or whatever. Um, Martin Luther King Day, is that when we're? It's January. January. That's January. right. Before our next meeting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we don't, that doesn't, even that doesn't give us much time, but we can put that together very quickly. You think so? Um, well, I was January thinking about 16. the community center. January 16th. Okay. Monday. How much do they, does there a rent for that? Yeah, I, I think presume? we have to rent it. Uh, that's not part of the city. I think we have to pay, but I don't think it's very much. I can ask them. The community center, like where the trafficking event was. Was it where the trafficking? I event know was that the senior, the old senior center. Right. Yes. By Johnson. We, yeah, because I was working with law enforcement, they waived that fee. Okay. So maybe that would be something that mm -hmm. the mayor or somebody else mm -hmm. that maybe has some more pull on it could help 
us with to save some money from the budget? I, um, I don't know. That is not part of the city, right? Because we can use city facilities without paying. Park and rec. Yeah. Park and rec. Oh, then we're good. If mm -hmm. it's park and rec, we're good. We don't have to pay anything. Okay. Yeah, we can use. We better any. double check that though. It oh. is park and rec for sure. Yeah, I know I it's know. park and rec, but, but we still yes. better double check the fee. Oh, fee? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure that I was and told availability. that. Yeah, any, and availability. That's the other thing too. Well, that's true, and that's yeah. what we have to. So um, I'm, I'm thinking it potentially could be because you know if you think about every participant they have a, a um, uh, attendant and if they have friends this could get kind of big yeah. and we might have to then delay it's, February or March it's a pretty good size good. though I know I'm not worried about the size I'm just looking at the short. if we serve something yeah. and it's gonna be in the time of day well, let's let's ask about availability. Yeah, we can make think about what we want done if we want a reception like we usually have in the Lynn House, which will be nice. Yeah, and if the the group is willing to put a little performance, we can have people come. Okay. So so I'll, we'll I get can, together. Okay. Yeah, sometime. Should we we'll do that? Okay, because yeah. I'm feeling yeah. like I'm at a loss. I have to admit. <laughs> Uh, let's move on to the social media outreach. I've been thinking, you know, we talked about becoming more involved or, you know, we want the city to know we exist more, the community members. What does everybody feel about having a human rights, New Alm Human Rights Commission Facebook page or Twitter account, something that's out there that people can follow I think along we have to see? consult the city about that. Okay. Like we are allowed to do that, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. That's one piece of it. The other piece is making sure that somebody keeps it updated. I uh, would that's recommend the vice chair. Oh, no. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, you know, somebody who's possibly taking MySpace minutes or sure. we get a chance <laughs> one of us every month has an opportunity or if there's, you know, something big going on like our... Uh, well, you know, if we, if we do get to do that, I think... Uh, What we would want to do with that is not only promote what we're doing, but share other links of human rights activities mm -hmm. across the nation and, and across the world, really. Yeah, and some news, some, you know, educate people. You know, keep people posted mm -hmm. and up to date mm -hmm. that way. It's a great education place. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big job. Thing. Right, it can be, and, and we just have to make sure that we're getting them from legitimate sources. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, in this I day and age, know. that's the other thing we have to deal with, too. Fake news. I, I know from when I first was asked to uh, being appointed, um, I checked out how much information was on the Human Rights Commission in the city page, and it's very, very little. Right. That's right. Um, I get all so of mine no from the ACLU, right. <coughs> um, mm -hmm. where it just comes directly. I get emails from them. Those might be mm -hmm. good to sure. use as links. It's <coughs> verifiable reporting I think if we're allowed to do it I think it's a good idea um, and Twitter probably wouldn't be bad either I I I don't tweet I mm. don't know how to tweet and I'm not sure I want to learn how to tweet <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that I think the Twitter account would be a lot easier it is a lot of just mm -hmm. retweeting of you know others mm -hmm. like I follow the ACLU it's <laughs> It's pretty easy compared to Facebook. Um, it, you know, it's something to think about. And you don't have to put too much. Yes. Or you I mean you can do short things. Oh, you can yeah. on, on Twitter, Twitter. I think there's what 40 character limit. Something okay. like it's not that. Very, 40, 44. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, but would that be enough really to inform? Yes, the ACLU, mm -hmm. uh, they share a lot. Minnesota shares a lot. I follow. I should, I should look at. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Should look at. It. I'm showing the date of our next meeting, it, January 23rd. Did you have something else? I did. Say? I just want to say, uh, are you going to be contacting uh, the City Council regarding that then, Madam Chair? I, <laughs> Ron, had volunteered to do okay. that. Okay. So you'll talk about, ask him about the social media aspect of things too then? Cool. Since you're there. <laughs> there. <laughs> Soon I'll be talking with them anyway. Yeah, not yes. sure about it's very appreciated. Thank you. <clears throat> I have one more thing, too. Yes. We have an open spot on our commission. That's right. What's the, the plan for getting our spot filled? Is 
Everybody was supposed to submit, if they had any ideas, submit those to the mayor. The mayor. I'm Name, waiting to hear back. Names and phone numbers is what the mayor is looking for. Well, names right. and phone numbers. So there's a way to contact them. We can, we can <laughs> email him that okay. information. Um, that wouldn't start until January. Mm -hmm. And they have to live within city limits. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I have somebody that I think would be really good. Male or female? Yeah, female. Yeah. Oh, any, either. Either or, because we're at 4-4, four, four, we should be, it, yeah. I don't think there's, is there a requirement to be? I don't know. Four, I, four? But it's not a uh, it matters. And I've been neglecting to ask her. She, she, she actively expressed some interest, but I've been meaning to ask her, are you really interested? Because I, there's no point in, you know, bothering everybody if she mm -hmm. really is not interested. So I will do that uh, this week for sure. But that and would if be she is, I will give you her name and her. The, the, the next meeting would be the first meeting for the new commissioner. Right. Oh, that's so right. That's between right. now and then I will, is I will talk to her window. tomorrow. Yeah. I will talk to her tomorrow. Does anybody else have anything they'd like to share? Any comments? All right, we'll move on. The date of the next meeting, January 23rd, 2017. Everybody good with that? Sounds good. Mm -hmm. yeah. good. So then I say it's time to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. And we're done. <laughs>